heard and they were pricked in their hearts and they said, what shall we do? What, what are we going to do? Now, Jesus uh, gave us the gospel and said, go and baptize. I want to say, praise the Lord. He said, go and baptize believers. And the apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost, and so we're going to start right here. And I don't want to jump down to it yet, though it could, it's going to come up in just a moment. When they ask, what must we do to be saved? Nobody jumped up and said, just um, stand on your feet. Or bow your head. Because as much as, I mean, you may stand on your feet, you may be flat in the floor. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen when the presence of God comes into your life. But he didn't just say, well, just in your mind, just make a decision and then that's the end of it and go home. Did anybody read that scripture where it said, just in your mind, make a decision and go home? No, when they stood up, what shall we do to be saved? Now let's look at 2 Thessalonians 1.8. Now it's going to come up here and in a flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a gospel of Christ that has to be obeyed. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he didn't say, that's the end of the story. Just tell people to stand up and then sit down. He said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Someone said, well, baptism has nothing to do with it. Well, the Bible says it does have something to do with it. The question is, what is that something? What, why is it that baptism has anything to do with it? Well, it's part of that obeying the gospel. Now, let's go to the next slide, Acts 2.38. Then they said, what must we do? Everyone say, do. What shall we do to be saved? Peter said unto them, Repent. Everyone say, repent. And it, it's hard for me not to stop there for a long time because uh, for me to talk about baptism is, uh, has very little meaning if a person does not understand what it is to repent, of course. So he said unto them, repent. Now how many notice that he told them what to do? He said unto them, what shall we do to be saved? Now, it would have been very easy for the apostle to say, just stand on your feet and bow your head and in your mind, just make a decision. Now, see, see what I'm trying to say? Now, if someone did that, I'm not making fun of it. I'm not making fun of it. I, I'm, I'm thankful for it. What I'm trying to tell you is, don't get stuck there and try to tell God, that's it, I don't want anymore. You want, you ought to want everything God has for you. Who am I talking to here tonight? I am telling you that God has a gospel in which he died, was buried, and rose again. And that's what baptism has got to do with it. I'm going to tell you, I love him so much. If he'd have said, be baptized in literal, uh, or buried in literal dirt. Now, I thank you, Lord, for not making that the case. At least he made it easy on us and said, be buried in water. Isn't that better than having to actually go, okay, you're not going to help me here. Then Peter said to them, repent. He told them what to do. Now, folks, repent is the Greek word metaneia, to turn oneself. He didn't just say stand up. Now he could have said, there's several Greek words he could have used. Stand up and bow your head and tell him, you know, what he could, but he didn't do that. I, I, what I'm trying to tell you is that whatever you do, I believe standing up and bowing your head is part of repentance. I believe if someone stands up and they bow their head and they pray, that's, surely that would count as a, at least, at the very least. Does anybody feel a desire to be close to the Lord in this place tonight? See, that, that's, he said, repent. But then he said, and. What do I do? Repent and. Now, see, that's what I didn't want. I didn't want the repent part. I just wanted the believe. I wanted believe to be me saying what I wanted it to be. 
And that was going to be the end of it. I believe, meaning I believe Jesus is real. Well, that's good, but that's not the doing part. I mean, you know, even the devils believe. And you say, oh, that's, oh, that's not fair. No, no, no. James says the devils believe and tremble. But that didn't save them alone. Now listen, don't miss my point. It is possible to accept the fact that Jesus was real and not go through the new birth experience. In fact, it's possible to go through the new birth experience and not walk with God. It's possible. Just because you were baptized and got the Holy Ghost 10 years ago, uh, if you're a devil... Of course, nobody here is I, Lord of heaven. What I'm trying to say is, it's the experience of salvation that we're looking for. Someone repents. Now, if you think repentance is it, or believe is it, that's it, I'm doing nothing else, I repented, that's it, then you don't want the end. And I didn't want the end. But I kind of did want the end. But I kept trying to find a way to say, I don't have to be baptized. Forget it. Don't need it. But there's something about the Holy Spirit that just keeps drawing us into His will. Can you say praise the Lord? There's something that draws us. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. Of course, my first question is, why does it say that and not in the name of the Trinity? That was, to me, that was the great dilemma. I mean, even if I'm baptized, if I'm not baptized in his name, what what does that matter? And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission. Everyone say, for the remission. We're going to go back to that in a moment. And you shall, everyone say, you shall... What must I do? Repent and be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That was the answer. Well, that, I just couldn't grasp that. It was like, I, I don't know. How, why would the Apostle Peter say something like that? And not just say, well, stand up and have faith or something like that. Romans 6, let's go there. Let's take a quick look before we start this journey into Acts chapter 2. This scripture began to open my understanding and I'm going to probably talk this way all the way through it I was hoping maybe I could be very teachy and not do it but I'm going to just talk about me I think the way I had to come to understand it because eventually I had to get baptized Now, my grandmother was in a church for 55 years and she was never baptized in Jesus name and she was a marvelous woman and I I thought well She loves God, and she's not baptized in Jesus' name, so uh, she's one of the finest persons I know. It's good enough for me. If it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me, and that's going to be the end of it. But little did I know, God was working on her. At 86 years old, my grandmother got baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, my goodness, that was the end right there. Grandma got baptized in Jesus' name. So this scripture began to open my understanding. And I'm only going to look at a portion of the scriptures. Do you see what I'm saying? Everybody say amen. Is it okay if we do this? Are you going to stay with me? Are you going to stay with me? Come on. So this began to open my understanding. Our old man, and we're going to just go to jump around. We're going to verse 6. We'll go back to verse 4. Go to verse 3. Go to verse 4. Someone said, why are you jumping around? Because I begin to see elements of Acts 2.38, right here in Romans chapter 6, it looks to me like our old man is crucified. And what happens when you're crucified? As everyone is talking about in the passion of Christ these days. Isn't it interesting that people are talking about the passion of Christ? I'm so glad they're talking about the passion of Christ. They're thinking about Jesus dying. It may cause all kinds of controversy, but aren't you glad Jesus died for our sins? He was crucified. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And I hope the whole world thinks about it. In fact, you're never going to, as long as this world exists, they're going to have to reckon with Jesus Christ. (laughs) He was crucified and now our old man is crucified with who them no it's crucified with him he died for us now i always had a, and i'm not i don't want to go there i'm trying to pull away from this but i always had a problem understanding why if there were multiple uh 
parts of God. Why?